Good afternoon and welcome to Amy Park on the land of the Wurundjeri people in the Gulen Nation in Melbourne for the final match of round 22 of the Isuzu Ute A-League season. It's the Premiers looking for a three-peat of Premiership victories. Melbourne City, who have been stuttering a little of late, they take on a Newcastle side hoping to keep their finals football hopes alive. Let's have a look at the starting lineups for today then. Rado Vitasic's side with just one win in three have made one change from the team that dominated but couldn't beat MacArthur. 1-1 one, one, two weeks ago, Callum Talbot, who turned his ankle while on international duty with the Oli Roos in Northern Italy, is replaced by Thomas Lamb. Back from suspension, expect Nuno Reis to move to the right back position. A-League top scorer, Jamie McLaren, is looking to end a barren run of three matches without a goal. He's been playing with a broken toe, but looks fit to go today. Still no Richard van der Ven or Matt Leckie. For Newcastle and Arthur Pappas, he thought he was going to be without a trio of players. Brandon O'Neill, Trent Bahaja and Becca Mikkel Tadze through yellow card suspension, but a quick check of the rule books, and all are available for Brandon O'Neill. It's A-League match number 150. Elsewhere in comes Dane Ingham at fullback for Jason Hoffman. Reno Piscopo makes his first start after injury, replacing Manabu Saito, while Josh Sotirio and Archie Goodwin are still missing with injury. You can just see there James Neuvenhausen, the uh, reserve backup third choice goalkeeper, has just been called up at the last moment after not being initially placed on the team sheet. But he has replaced Matt Sutton injured during the warm up, I suspect. There is Rado Vitasic. He said this week in the pre match press conference three wins and Melbourne City will be premiers for a third season in a row. That's three in their last six matches starting today. Arthur Pappas, Melbourne boy, back home at the helm of the Newcastle Jets. But three losses from his three meetings as head coach of the Jets against Melbourne City. He'll be hoping for a change of fortune. We are all set then for kickoff in the sunshine at Amy Park. And it's Melbourne City and an early touch for Aidan O'Neill, one of their newest socceroos. It's been a big couple of weeks on the international stage for football in Australia. And round 22 wraps up now with Melbourne City, the Premiers looking to re-establish their four-point lead at the top of the standings. Andy Harper over a fast-finishing Adelaide, standing in their way, a Newcastle side who themselves haven't been in the best form but remain in the hunt as does everyone yeah right down to position 12 brisbane good afternoon robbie and to everyone watching on the 10 network and paramount plus well, it's been an incredibly exciting weekend uh, of football jamison that one's over here Vitasic taking over from Patrick Kisnorbo. Oh, what a mistake! And what a brilliant save from Weir to deny the league's top scorer in Jamie McLaren, who's three games without a goal now. Could so easily have been number 19 of the season. We'll have another look at that in a moment. As soon as we get a chance, Curtis Good now on the football, but a first huge let off for the Newcastle Jets. Clever little touch from Naboo for Boss. Straightens up, beeline towards goal. Boss still going. And the gold shirts finally managed to get it clear and a foul. And will just ease the pressure that is mounting fiercely on Newcastle. Well exposed down the far touchline in that Geordie Boss raid, but so too were they exposed by their own captain. Did he not see Jamie McLaren because of the sun? Who knows? What an escape that is. And Jamie McLaren bringing the ball down, getting it towards goal as quickly as he could, but Michael Weir was sharp enough to save his skipper in what would have been quite profound blushes. Well won, the high press. Helped on 
by McLaren, one for Tilio to chase, but the defence just gets a boot in there. Nico Tadze, clever little pass. Beringham, the Kiwi fullback, giving Nuno Reis a real run. He manages to keep it in play. The cutback, brilliantly done. And it's Costa Grosos, who really should have done better there. It's a great ride by Dane Ingham. Accepted all the space that was offered him. Nuno Reis really was never going to foot it with him. And he probably thought, Reis, that Dane Ingham had overplayed the hand. And he really had to work hard to make something of this with that heavy touch. But it's a great angle back into the box. And Grosos arriving on time. Needs to do better from there. Well read by Curtis Good. Trent Bahaja in the central striking role. Mikkel Tadze and Piscopo, two number 10s just behind him. Finding space on this near side now. Marco Tilio against Ingham. Raish. Nabu. See what he wanted to do. Didn't happen though. Bahaja, the former Sydney FC. And in the end, foul. Jack Morgan, the referee, had a good long look at it and then decided once it was a free kick that it was probably worth a yellow. He waited a while. Change time now for Melbourne City. Very early. Now, is that just for the pace of Dane Ingham or has he picked up a little strain? Let's see what the feeling is. Maybe a little grab of the right hamstring. Mikkel Tadze, good little touch for Piscopo. And this is where he can be dangerous. Ingham. Fouled by Tilio. Just lunging in. The right boot of Costa Grosos, the left of Renan Piscopo runs away. And here's Grosos, back post. It's a good ball. Jermans headed back across. Glover doesn't know too much about it. And somehow it's hacked clear. Appeals. For a handball from the Jets, Matt Yeoman runs away, suggesting VAR will have to look at that. Talbot's header is straight back into the danger zone. Buhaja on the turn, defended, and in the end, City get it clear. Frantic, frantic for Melbourne City. No one really particularly knew where the ball was situated. The Jets couldn't swoop on it. We're checking something out here on the VAR. Thurgate's pretty sure there's a handball in there. I think it's from the initial header from Matt Yerman, possibly. And there's Jenkinson up the back. Does that come off the boot? Does that come off O'Neill? And from that point on, no one really... Dane Ingham's pouncing. No one other really from Newcastle's looking to swoop, but that's what we've gone back to. Is that enough of an intervention with the hand? But, but well, I think it's hit in the boot's hand, but... You can't say he's looking to gain an advantage there. No, the problem is, is that the arm is away from the body. I just find I think it's going to be, if we're sticking with what we've seen already this weekend, not of the head from Jack Gordon, Jack Morgan rather, and penalty it is for Newcastle. Andrew Naboo penalised. Now, yesterday we saw yellow cards for the player that handled the ball as well. Becker Mikkel Tadze now, the Georgian, to step up. They've scored two of their three penalties this season, Newcastle. Mikkel Tadze against Glover. And Newcastle have the lead on the half hour. And Newcastle's hopes of finals football have just been given a real shot in the arm. Well, through the course of a season, I guess every team is going to lament the concession of penalties like this, but what Andrew Naboot is supposed to do with his arms there, the fire's description for me, an explanation. But on the Harvey Norman replay, Becca Mikkel Tadze, broken wing at all, steps up to give the Jets the lead. 
And we think back to the last A-League men's match for Melbourne City where they totally dominated MacArthur. And then right on half time got hit with that counter-attacking goal. Well, their dominance today hasn't extended right to the cusp of half time, but still a very powerful opening 30 minutes from Melbourne City. Hasn't yielded them a goal and Newcastle have bounced up and helped themselves to one. There's the signal. Barisha's ball in. Straight to Weir. All too easy. Who looks to release quickly. Oh, look at this. Tom Glover's come a long way. And he's fouled by Trent Buhaja, but that was very risky goalkeeping. He's got to be careful here. Crazy stuff from Melbourne City all of a sudden. I'm not quite sure how that's not a foul. Was it on Jamison? By Jamison? Ref thought he got the ball. I'd love to see this one again. He's on a yellow card, Scott Jamison. Let's remember. Melbourne City skipper. He's landed heavily there, Michael Tudzap. So I. Again, well, he's very fortunate there, Tom Glover, to get away with that, in my opinion. Nope. I don't know how the ref has not seen that a foul. Now, the fourth official, Jonathan Barrero, is having a word to Jack Morgan here. There's the touch. No. I can't see any contact. Can you, Paul? Uh, what do you know? Ball. <laughs> Red card for Jamison. Now... It looked like that was a straight red card for Scott Jamison and not a second yellow. It was a second yellow just before that. The yellow came up. So a second yellow for Scott Jamison, who's claiming he got the ball. There may have been just the faintest of touches, but clearly you saw the direction the ball was going. It was Mikkel Tadzik who passed the ball through. Maybe just comes off the inside of the leg, but nothing to prevent Mikkel Tadze's forward movement. And he was collected, trip. there's the second yellow. And there's the red. At the close of play today, Newcastle conceivably could be in the playoff position. And they've got an enormous opportunity to achieve just that. Arthur Pappas, a look at the watch. Four minutes of stoppage time at the end of this first half. Just over 30 seconds of that left. Big switch for Talbot. Melbourne City. As Tilio accelerates. Tilio goes down, no foul, says the referee. Tilio shields the ball, gets back to his feet. City. Looking to finish the half on a high. The header from O'Neill. Out of play, goal kick. Referee says, let's get on with things. The referee deems that shoulder to shoulder for Mikkel Tate. It was a good chase back. Yeah. It's like a little game of stuck in the mud there. And those types of balls from Melbourne City. As we've just seen to complete that play at the half and it could be ineffective. Well, what a dramatic and entertaining first half of football. City starting on top. They're not happy with how it's gone. Plenty of words with our referee quartet as they make their way off the field of play. It is half time. Newcastle Jets 1, Melbourne City 0. Big job to do for the Jets to carry this one home, get themselves into equal sixth place at least with three games to play. What an afternoon. The stage is set, second half underway. The Premiers, Melbourne City chasing the game. A player down and it's their newest Socceroo, Aidan O'Neill, taking matters into his own hands. A piercing driving run. Does that set the tone for this second 45? Certainly a positive start. O'Neill again. Four City blue shirts in the box waiting for this cross to be delivered. O'Neill again. Turns Thurgate. Still O'Neill. Now Tilio. Marisha. His ball in. Thurgate with the header away. Throw in an attacking sense for Melbourne City. Fantastic start from Melbourne City. Good on them. You know, their competition dominance has just been 
becoming a little bit frayed in the last few weeks. Results not perfect for them, etc. Go a man down and a goal down, and they've come out of the blocks in the second half like real champions. Let's really get into this. Claw our way back today. Reassert ourselves at the summit of the competition. We're a very interested Adelaide United sit just one point behind on the table at the moment. Well, what a statement it would be to come back from a goal down. There's just a little bit of an edge to this one, four minutes into the second half. Mikkel Tadze with Ingham. He accelerates, forcing Barisha back. O'Neill. Mikkel Tadze again playing in that unfamiliar wide position. Thurgate, the comeback, Rosas. Oh, what an opportunity. His second of the afternoon. And he can't make it stink. Well, not just his second opportunity. It's his second almost identical opportunity. Couldn't steer it in. Didn't need really any sort of backswing. It wasn't a huge backswing in, in uh, defense of Costas, but didn't need any. Discapo. Thurgate. German. Discapo slipping and sliding again. O'Neill wins it straight back. Early ball for McLaren. Inadvertent control, but a good one. Now Barisha. Alon Barisha touches it for O'Neill, who hits it, deflected. Wonderful save from Weir. Barisha again. City so close to an equaliser. Talbot with Tilio. And this is why Newcastle would love to have the insurance of a second goal. Lamb now, trying to twist and turn his way through. The ten men on the front foot, Bosses crosses overhead, and not a behind by Ingham. It was good pressure, great possession play, lovely incursions. Newcastle holding tight around their box, defending well. And even the deflection was no trouble. But Michael Weir, he does brilliantly to adjust. Excellent work from the Newcastle goalkeeper. to go at Amy Park flag up for offside against Saito that is good Ooh, we have to be careful lunging into challenges like that we did well to avoid cleaning up Brandon O'Neill now Tilio he's been lively buzzing around like Hayden O'Neill, Geordie Boss, Callum Talbot, but for the moment still no final product. Good. Curtis Good with Berisha. A touch. And the shot over. And again, they can't test Michael Weir. No. Had a shot the first half, he was off balance. This time he was balanced. Maybe as though he rushed it a fraction. However, space from that range be able to set yourself and hit the target Nabu again chips it up McLaren jumping at the front post and importantly jumping away from the flight of the ball it's just a third shot of the day for Jamie McLaren who had that Great chance in the first half when Matt Yeoman's cross-field pass hit him in the chest on the penalty spot, basically. He controlled and shot quickly. Now, the change is coming for the Jets. Number 19, Callum Timmons comes into the contest he's only scored four A-League goals in 54 appearances but three of them came last season in two games against Melbourne City if ever you were looking to invoke the footballing gods and a little bit of coincidence and anything else 
you could get. Why not make a trend of it as Arthur Tampa springs on the former Perth man, Callum Timmons, also bringing on Jason Hoffman as well. The former Melbourne City man comes in and Marco Tilio was lively in the second half in particular. Doesn't look too impressed about coming off. As Florent Berangui comes into the game, the Frenchman, Aidan O'Neill, looks up. It's another good ball, this time it's well time. Oh, and the cross from Nabu, just behind McLaren as it evaded everybody, including the league's top scorer. Well, that was harkening back to the Sydney Football Stadium, Allianz Stadium last night as Sydney FC sought to close in on Western United and chances coming and going. It's agonising for City fans. And now Max Caputo does come in for a Valon Berisha who's just flown back into the country after playing twice for his country. Mikkel Tadze finally into that central striking role but it's more as to work defensively than anything else. Great strength from Naboo, even in the 92nd minute. Talbot, the cross blocked by O'Neill. And the header conceding another corner from Kankar. Well, how's Arthur Pappas feeling at the moment? Late concession, last start against Perth to blow two points at home. They've got three in the kit bag at the moment. Berongay's cross, the header, and it's in! And it's Max Caputo! The 17-year-old, with his first ever A-League goal, who climbed highest in the middle to break Newcastle hearts. And Arthur Pappas and this Newcastle side just can't take a trick. Well, they can't defend a corner. In injury time, that's for sure. It's catastrophic for the Jets on the Harvey Norman replay. Michael Weir's been excellent today, can do nothing about this. There's a pack of gold shirts, but not one of them can get to the ball. Into the back of the net it goes off Max Caputo's bonds. And the Jets collapse to the ground, their own heads go into their hands. Consecutive weeks in injury time. Four points evaporate. And he has secured his side a very important point. He has preserved their unbeaten home record this season. It sees them move just two points clear at the top. It's finished here at Amy Park. Melbourne City, a last gasp, one. Newcastle Jets, one.